So today, let's talk about how to spice up your work wardrobe. Hello and a very warm welcome to today's video. For those who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. For those who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you're enjoying my videos. I put out videos on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion to some slightly more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then head down, hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and join us. I love interacting with you all. I'm all about living life loud, and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you, just celebrating who you are as an individual and expressing yourself and your own personal style. I think it's so important to back yourself in life. So, what are we gonna talk about today? We're going to talk about spicing up your work wardrobe, how to inject a little bit of personality, a little bit of your own individual flair into your work wardrobe. Now, this is something that I feel quite passionate about because as you know, I'm a lover of fashion, but I'm also a lover of vibrant and bold and kind of out there in terms of design. So the last thing that I ever wanted was to find myself in a place where I didn't feel like I could express myself. And for a little bit of time, you know, when it came to my work wardrobe, I had a very conservative work wardrobe. It was full of dark suits with, you know, white shirts and dark ties and it just didn't reflect who I was. I had a lot of blue and you know navy and grey woolen overcoats to, to wear over suits and that's just not who I was. That's never been who I am but I felt like that was kind of what I needed to project at the time and actually it was it just wasn't the case. That was my own pressure that I was placing on myself. So I'm very passionate about encouraging others to express themselves um, and fashion is a great way of being able to do that. Now of course this all depends on the type of workplace. Um, do you have a uniform? Do you have a very strict dress code? You know what are you doing that day? Let's say you're an attorney by trade. If you're just in the office and not client facing then you might have a slightly more relaxed or a slightly different outfit than if you're appearing at a hearing or something along those lines. You know you need to think about the situation. However I still think there are ways to inject a little bit of personal personality and I'm going to talk you through some of my top tips when it comes to style and self-expression into your pers into your wardrobe. So my number one tip, my absolute favourite thing and this is what I probably do the most, tailoring. Good tailoring makes all the difference. Well fitted tailoring, well structured tailoring is second to none and you don't have to spend a huge amount to have great tailoring. Places like Zara have great tailoring. Um, I buy a lot of pieces from ASOS Design. They've also got some really nice tailoring that doesn't cost the earth. You have brands like Hawes and Curtis. I buy a lot of my workwear from Hawes and Curtis who are a slightly more conservative brand but their tailoring is impeccable. They use some fab materials. But you can go more, you can go more pricey if you wanted to. You can go to Tom Ford, you can go to Balmain if you wanted. But the thing is, it's not just about well-fitted tailoring and well-structured tailoring. You can do tailoring in amazing colours. You could have the most vibrantly coloured blazer. Pair that with a pair of black tailored trousers, maybe a white shirt, a black turtleneck, something along those lines, a great pair of shoes, and you've got yourself a really fabulous but still quite conservative outfit but it has this incredible pop from that tailoring. That could be something, you know, you could wear blue, you could wear yellow, you could wear pink, you could wear purple. And I'm saying this because I own all of these colours in my blazers. Green, white, there are so many ways that you can do a little bit of something, but the silhouette is still incredibly classic and incredibly stylish because blazers, I'm sorry, never go out of fashion. Different styles of them might, but I think the classic blazer will never go out of style. And the great thing with tailoring as well is that you can mix up the fabrics that you choose to opt for as well. You could, you, you could go for a velvet, you could go for a tartan, you could go for a tweed. There's no reason why you can't experiment and use potentially the fabric. So let's say that you wanted to wear a, a navy suit, but you didn't want it to be cotton and therefore you wanted something that was going to give it a little bit of visual differentiation without having to have a really bold colour. You could go for tweed. 
if you wanted, so that adds a certain amount of dimension. Silk is another one that you can go for because it has a reflective property which adds a certain edge to the outfit, but it's still incredibly conservative. Also, silk is incredibly flowy. It's a very flattering material, um, I find. I do own a pair of silk trousers and they are so comfortable, and mine are in a little bit of a kind of a crazy pattern. I call them my circus tent trousers, but oh my word, they are so comfortable to wear. And I think that they would work for pretty much anyone, um, and they don't cling, which I love. Um, I used to be a big fan of everything had to be skin tight, no longer. No longer. The skin tight stuff, there's a time and a place for it, but not as often as I used to wear it. Second thought is around layering. I love a layered outfit, you know, I love a good pair of trousers, be that tailored trousers, jeans, um, with a shirt or a polo shirt and a jumper over the top and sometimes I'll even throw a blazer on over that. And I love that because you're able to add different textures into the outfit and you can also add different colours. I love having quite a dark jumper and dark trouser but then having a bold shirt or a bold um or a bold polo shirt on underneath um you know i've got a polo shirt from hugo boss that's neon yellow and i really really like wearing that pink was a big fat is something that i'm always a big fan of having um under a more conservative outfit or you can switch it around so i have a lovely pink jumper that i wear but i might wear that with a white shirt on um underneath it or actually even if i don't go for any color at all you could just go all navy you could go for navy jeans a navy jumper a navy shirt or a navy polo shirt and then a jacket over the top that would still look incredibly chic and because they're all going to be different materials because the shirt or polo shirt be a different material to the jumper which is a different material to the trouser it adds a certain amount of dimension to it and it also gives you flexibility where if you wanted one of the items to be slightly oversized and play with the proportions of the outfit you could absolutely do that you can mix and match what you want you could potentially have the shirt untucked under the jumper if you wanted it to be slightly more casual or you can have it tucked in and then just have a very sleek um kind of unbroken silhouette but I think it also looks really cool when um, people have a shirt that's partially untucked under a jumper, but then the rest of the outfit's quite formal. That can look really, really nice. There are ways of edging up an outfit. And like I said, you can play with the materials when it comes to a look such as that. Accessories are always a great way to jazz up an outfit. And you can have the most simplistic of outfits and you can really, really jazz it up when it comes to your accessories. So I'm talking anything from Let's say you're wearing a dark suit, but you, uh, let's say you're wearing a dark suit and a white shirt, but you wanted something that was going to jazz things up a little bit. Have a bold tie and pocket square combination. Obviously it needs to go with the rest of the outfit, but you could go for that. You could wear a scarf. Why not go for a great scarf? I love a Calvin Klein scarf myself, um, but Aspinall also do beautiful silk scarves which can be a really lovely way of, um, of adding an additional fabric to your item. It can be a great cover-up if you wanted to cover up a little bit more. Um, and they do some beautiful patterns. So I think that can work really well. Brooches are another great example. I will come on to jewelry later, but a brooch is a great accessory that you could just place on your lapel and spice up the outfit a little bit or another one you know if you've got a slightly shortened trouser on um you could wear a really fun pair of socks is it the happy sock company they do some really fun designs and it's a way of just being able to tie the whole thing in um particularly and we all know that i don't think that fashion has a gender but particularly in more stereotypically men's fashion you might be able to use a tie pocket square sock all with the same color which just ties the outfit together there's a common thread that pieces it all together i think that's a great option similar to accessories but a category that deserves to be considered in its own right is shoes shoes are a great way to change up your outfit they can give it a completely different look even if the outfit remains the same let's say from day to night just changing your shoe can have a huge impact. So, for example, if you wanted to have a slightly more conservative shoe, but you wanted something that was going to give a little bit of visual differentiation or something that had a little bit of elaboration on it, you might not choose to go for an Oxford, you might choose to go for a Brogue. 
that could be a great example. Or if you're a big fan of Oxfords, but you wanted to wear the same outfit from day into the evening, then you could potentially go from an Oxford into a loafer, give the trouser a little bit of an upturn, put on a loafer, all of a sudden you've completely changed the overall aesthetic. A loafer I think is a great way of wearing a shoe and loafers are completely unisex. I think they work across the board. Um, there are some great styles. Kurt Geiger are a particular shoe brand that I, as you know, I love, but I actually really love their loafers. I own a lot of pairs of their loafers. Um, I haven't worn them all that much. I bought a lot of them during lockdown, um, but I think they're fantastic and they can really change an outfit, um, particularly to make it slightly more evening, but I also wear loafers during the day and have no problem doing so. Now, one for the high heel lovers out there, if you wear high heels to work, if you want to have something that is slightly different to the kind of simple classic pump, um, if you wear a lot of pumps to work, let's say a pump like this, this is an 100 millimeter patent pump. You wanted something that had a little bit of visual differentiation to it, a little bit of spice, then you might choose to opt for something like this. And you might choose to opt for this for a number of different reasons. Firstly, the metallic finish is still sophisticated but it adds a little bit of dimension to the shoe. Secondly, this little bit of perspex is very, very fun. I absolutely love a shoe that has a little bit of perspex because it still holds your foot in place whilst also showing a bit of your foot without showing your toes because the toes are not the most attractive part of the foot, but this shows the side of your foot. And thirdly, what I love about these are the cutouts. This is sexy without being too garish and without being too evening. I would probably wear these in the evening more than I would wear them during the day. However, I do think that they could work really well during the day. So maybe consider something that has a cutout, but maybe not the other features. You know, you can get a cutout, a shoe with a, a black shoe in let's say suede or leather with a cutout that doesn't have the perspex. Or you might want a pump like this, but in a slightly more fun color you might want one that's metallic, or you might want one that's got little bits of perspex that doesn't necessarily go into a cutout. There are certain designers who do a shoe where this portion here might be perspex. So you can see an element of the foot, but the structure of the shoe is still a pump. Now, I do have some no-nos when it comes to high heels in the workplace, but we'll get onto those a little bit later. Of course, you can look at something like a ballet flat, and if you are a big fan of a ballet flat, but you want something that's maybe got a little bit more dimension than a leather ballet flat, maybe consider one that's quilted. That is still a very formal, classic style, but the quilting adds something slightly different to the shoe. And of course, you can also go for them in different color combinations. Chanel have made the ballet flat incredibly famous in two-tone colors, and you can see a lot of dupes out there. So that's potentially an option as well. And finally, dependent on your workplace, I always think you can't go wrong with a good trainer. Um, I wear trainers to work in all manner of colors, lots of different styles, as long as they're in good condition. That's the main thing. If your trainers aren't in good condition, don't wear them. Um, but if you have a set that are in good condition, you're keeping them clean, then I don't see any reason why you can't add an element of casualness to a somewhat formal outfit. Now, I'm not a huge fan of kind of white trainers, denim jeans, and a white t-shirt in the workplace. I just don't think that it's, um, I just don't think that it's quite formal enough. I have a quite a formal sense of fashion. Um, however, you can also but like make that work a little bit differently if you were to, for example, throw a blazer on over the top. By the way, I'm really sorry if you can hear the wind outside and the rain. It is having like an absolute gale today. I don't know what's happened because yesterday the weather wasn't terrible. On Friday, it was raining, but then it was nice all evening. I really don't know what's happening in the UK at the moment. The weather is just abysmal, but it's so changeable, which makes dressing really difficult and planning activities really, really hard. So. Lord knows what is happening right now. Okay, and next up, I briefly touched on this, but jewellery is another way of being able to spice up an outfit. So that could be brooches, statement necklaces, bracelets, rings, because, you know, not everybody wants to wear the same jewellery day in, day out. Not everything has to be fine jewellery. I wear a mixture of fine jewellery and costume jewellery. 
um, my more fun pieces. I wear a lot of things that are snakes and stuff like that. And that is um, costume jewelry. Um, my fine jewelry tends to be a little bit more conservative and a little bit more classic. Um, but you can mix things up. You can go for different styles, maybe mix the metals if you want to add something slightly different. Maybe go for a mixture of silver and rose gold or whatever, whatever takes your fancy. But you can absolutely mix things up when it comes to um, jewellery and you can wear quite a simple outfit and then let's say you throw a statement necklace on with it. That can work really, really well, but it just adds something slightly different and it draws the eye as well. With something like that where you're making a statement with a certain piece, just be comfortable with wherever you're drawing the eye to. So. Yum. Something else that you could possibly look to do if you had a staple item within your wardrobe is you could jazz up the collar. If you're a lover of a shirt, let's say you're wearing just a plain white shirt and you wanted to jazz it up somewhat, you can jazz up the collar. You can either buy pre-embellished items or, and I saw this on Amazon and I thought it was really, really cute, you can buy almost like little elements that you stick onto the collars, like you can pin onto them and they're removable. And it just adds something a little bit different. There were some birds and they were in this beautiful, vibrant blue color. And I thought those would look so lovely with a white shirt, a pair of tailored trousers and a simple pair of high heel pumps. That would look absolutely fabulous. But seriously, what is going on with the weather? Sorry, I just went and closed all of the vents because I really don't know what's going on, but I've kind of lost my train of thought with that one. But jazz up your collars, like I said, pre-embellished, add the embellishments yourself. You can wear quite a simple outfit and it can look really, really great. Okay, I'm not a lover of big, big logos when it comes to workwear. However, there is one particular item where I think you can get away with a big, big logo and that is a bag. And the reason being is that that isn't something that stays attached to you the whole time. I, I do think that it's okay to wear a Chanel classic flap to work or a Louis Vuitton on the go. I don't see the issue with having a logo bag. Um, I know some people worry about what the opinion might be, but I think, you know, in the same way that you'll have your colleagues talking about where they went on their last fancy holiday, why can't you show the fact that maybe you've put your money elsewhere and you've decided to buy a, a different bag or whatever that may be. You know, people put their money into different places. So I never worry too much about that. So I think you can get away with that. And for example, a work bag that I've been using recently is my Longchamp Le Pliage. And this has a huge logo on the front of it. Granted, this isn't the most expensive bag in the world, but I, you know, it's still got a really big logo. It's still a little bit bold and a little bit brash and I don't turn it and wear it this way because the whole point is, look at it, it's lovely, it's cute. I'm starting to like it more. Um, so I don't see the issue with that and I think it can work really, really well. Now I know it doesn't stay with you all day, but I would also say, do try and match the bag to your outfit. I do change my work bag. I kind of have three that I use. I have my Karl Lagerfeld tote my Kurt Geiger leather Kensington flat bag, and now my Longchamp um, Le Pliage Pride collection piece. So those are the three, and I tend to figure out which outfit's going to work. On the whole, I can find it. Um, I can find one that's gonna work with each. So just have a think about that, but just make sure it matches. Okay, we are getting there, and my penultimate um, is that a turtleneck is a great replacement for a shirt. It adds a slightly more casual, edge to the outfit you can do it in a slightly different material but it's still quite formal i love a suit with a turtleneck underneath or a pair of tailored trousers or even a jean if you've got denim with a turtleneck throw a blazer on over it depending on the shoes you're wearing it's still quite a smart casual outfit and it's quite a dynamic outfit which is great and you can really experiment with the color of your turtleneck so for example i've got turtlenecks ranging from neon yellow to black to a maroon red to hot pink i've got uh turquoise and i just put different outfits with them so the turquoise might have a the rest of the outfit might be navy in terms of the yellow i'm trying to think what do i wear that with i don't know if i've ever worn the bright yellow partly because i think it is quite hard to match but also i don't think it matches my skin tone um the hot pink 
Um, I've worn with actually all manner of outfits. Um, I've worn, but I wear that on the whole with a black or blue. Um, however, it does go really well with grey and white as well. So there are lots of different options there. Um, and again, this is a, all of these are unisex tips, but this is absolutely one that works really, really well across the board. Um, and I think it's something that you can very easily dress up or down. In the same way that when we were talking about how could you change your outfit? So let's say that you want to change your outfit and you thought, I just want to simplify it somewhat, make it a little bit more casual because I've been wearing a suit with Oxfords all day. Okay, change out the shirt and tie for the casual neck, change out your Oxfords for your loafers. All of a sudden you've got a very different look. In a similar vein, if you've been wearing stilettos all day, you might want to Let's say you've been wearing five inch stilettos um, all day, you might want to drop those down to a four inch with a slightly thicker heel, change out um, your blouse for a turtleneck. So, and then all of a sudden you've got a very different look as well. So that's a great way of doing it. And like I said, you can experiment with color or you can go quite conservative. I actually wore a black turtleneck recently on a trip into London and I absolutely loved it. I wouldn't have worn this outfit to work in absolutely no way, however, if I was wearing different shoes, potentially, and I was wearing gold backless loafers, you probably could wear a backless loafer in summer. Um, but if I was wearing a different jacket, I absolutely think that this outfit could have worked for the workplace. And I'm pretty sure I probably have worn this outfit in the workplace with a different shoe and a different jacket. And finally, don't be afraid to experiment with alternative silhouettes and alternative fabrics, slightly edgier fabrics. So when I'm talking about an alternative silhouette, I'm talking about potentially a asymmetrical top, for example, or an asymmetrical skirt or dress might be a good example of that. A wide-legged trouser, maybe slightly more of that flared style that is starting to come back into fashion. If you ever want a celebrity, to model on how to wear a wide leg trouser, Meredith Marks from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Fabulous use of the bell bottom and she pairs them beautifully. I mean, her style's impeccable anyway, but she's great celebrity inspo for when it comes to that. So you might want to choose something like a wide leg trouser. Oversized jackets are another great option and that is a way of adding a certain amount of tailoring, but oversized jackets add, they add some formalness but they are still relatively casual. They are more casual than, for example, a military style blazer, but they are less casual than a denim jacket, as an example, but they are incredibly comfortable. I have oversized blazers and I find them incredibly comfortable, very easy to wear, um, and they add a different proportion. So when we're talking about proportions of the outfit, and I'm talking about maybe thinking about slightly different materials, dependent again on where you work and what you're doing, you could consider something like pleather, your leather, you know, a great pair of leather trousers. I'm not talking Sandy from Greece kind of leather trousers where you have to be sewn into them, but there are great options when it comes to leather trousers, or you might want to wear a leather jacket over the top um, of your outfit, whatever that may be. Formal rock and roll, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fabulous. Um, but again, I think that's a, I think that could work very, very well. Unisex, um, but also, yeah, leather, I think is a, a cool material. It doesn't really suit me. I don't really have the, um, I don't personally feel like I have the right figure for leather. I do own a pair of leather trousers and I feel like Ross in Friends when he can't get them off in the bathroom. Um, so I don't tend to wear them, but I think they can work really well for other people. And also I love an asymmetrical line. Again, not for myself, but I do love asymmetrical. I think it's a beautiful silhouette that it creates. Okay, now let's go through my don'ts and I will try and rattle through these because I am conscious that this is a relatively long video but hopefully you're finding it useful in some capacity. My first don't, open-toed shoes. I am not a fan of open-toed shoes and of course these don'ts are just my personal opinion. If you do them, fine, do what you like, I'm all good. But these are just my personal don'ts. I'm not a lover of open-toed shoes. Um, you know, something like a slider or, or a flip-flop is absolutely, I don't believe, to be appropriate. Um, but also, let's say you're a heel fan, an open-toed high heel. I think they're very evening. I think that's very evening. And again, I just don't, I just don't warm to it when it comes to workplace fashion. Um, I'm a fan of a closed shoe. And that's also my own personal style. I much prefer a closed-toe shoe 
for myself than an open-toed shoe, and that's also what I prefer to look at on other people. I prefer a closed-toed shoe. We talked about logos earlier, and there is a way of doing subtle branding, so I don't, for example, think that there's anything wrong with, if you're a big Christian Louboutin fan, I don't think there's anything wrong with wearing a pair of, you know, black leather Christian Louboutins. You know, ultimately, it's the sole of the shoe that's red. The sole spends most of the time on the floor, and if it's, you know, if it's a pair of high heels that you're wearing, yeah, you know what you're wearing, but I don't, I don't think that there's a problem with that. However, I am not a fan of really big branding in terms of things like earrings, brooches, belts, you know, the, someone wear a huge Valentino belt across their waist or massive CC earrings or a huge CC brooch. I just don't love it. I think on a bag, it's okay. I just don't love it. I think it's, um, I think it's a lot. Yeah. Belts are the thing that I dislike the most. I'll be honest. It's the belts that I don't like the most. Little ones, okay, fair enough. You know, I know that Gucci do the little, like, GG Marmont belt, but the really big ones I'm not a huge fan of, and yeah, like the huge V Valentino one, or um, a massive, like, Versace Medusa head or something. Mm. No, no, not a lover of. Huge H for MS belt, no, not a lover. Okay, number three, shorts. I don't think I really need to go into this one. I just, I just, no, 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 no. If you work outside and it's summer, absolutely, fair enough, go for it. In terms of a formal environment, shorts are a no, personally, from me. Which is weird because skirts, absolutely. I don't know why shorts are different. I don't know, I just think there's something about them. I do think that shorts can look beautiful. You know, I think it was um, Kyle Richards from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I remember she wore this beautiful soft gold short suit um, and she looked fantastic, but it was an evening look. And I think shorts, form part of an evening look when they're paired with, when they're tailored. Oh, and again, another item that I love, but just not for that particular setting, faux fur or feathers. I just, I, meh. If you've got a coat that has, for example, a faux fur collar on it, that's different, but I would never wear my hot pink Lagerfeld faux fur in the workplace. I wouldn't wear feathers, I own a feathered coat. I would not wear that in the workplace. I think it's faux feathers. Can you get faux feathers? I felt like it was, it wasn't expensive enough to be anything more than, but again, I wouldn't wear that. I actually wore that as part of a costume. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just personally wouldn't wear something along those lines, um, in all honesty. Um, I just think they're very evening, um, or any coat with a faux fur collar maybe, um, but also it can spark a debate, and I get asked this occasionally when I wear my faux fur is, oh, that's real, isn't it? And I say, no, absolutely not. I don't support the use of fur. Um, but sometimes it can spark a debate that you just don't want to get into. Um, so just think twice about that one. But for me, something like faux fur, feathers, mm, no. And finally, again, another item that I love, but it's all about right place, right time with these. And as you can see with most of these items, other than open-toed shoes, which I'm just not a fan of in general, all of these items are absolute yeses in terms of having them in your wardrobe. Just no from me when it comes to your workplace wardrobe. This one is platform heels. I love a platform shoe. We know I love a platform shoe. I have the most fabulous platforms myself. Um, and we also know that, for example, my favourite Christian Louboutins are always the platforms. I love them. I think they're fantastic. I could go on longer, but I won't. However, platforms are too evening. They are a shoe that, even if you're a very confident individual walking in them, that kind of teeter-totter, no. A little bit too evening, a little bit too club. Mm, just, yeah, just a no-no, just a no-no. But the same also goes for shoes that are too high. So where I showed these two shoes as an example earlier, this one is a four inch shoe, this one is a five inch. So this is 100 millimeters, this is a 115 or 120, something like that. If this is too high, do not wear it. It looks silly if someone is walking in a shoe that is too tall for them. It doesn't look good. Drop the heel if you need to. And 
Yes, I am not a lover of kitten heels. We all know this. However, if a kitten heel is what suits you best in terms of what you can walk in, go for it. If you prefer to wear a 85 millimeter heel, wear that. If you can walk in 100s, fine. If you can walk in 120s, fine. Just make sure that whatever you are wearing, you can walk in. But I do think that a platform is just always a no-no. I just don't think that they look, I don't think that they look massively professional in my not so humble opinion. So I thought I would just share where I get some of my workwear from, just to give you a little bit of an idea. So we have Zara, we have ASOS, but it tends to be ASOS design, Halls and Curtis, Reese, Armani, Ralph Lauren, Jack Wills, that is Karl Lagerfeld, Kurt Geiger and June for shoes. You know where my bags are from, I've done those videos. There's loads of different places that you can get your stuff from. Those are just some of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Ted Baker is another one. But just go with whatever works for your personal style. Of course, there's high end, there's, you know, there's high street. Just go for whatever works best for you. So there we have it, guys. Those are my thoughts on how to inject a little bit of personality into your workplace wardrobe. Um, and also some of my don'ts. Like I said, I'm not criticizing anyone who does these. If you do, if you do, do the things that I put on my don'ts list, that's absolutely fine. You might look at some of the stuff that I've suggested and go, absolutely not, that's ridiculous. That is completely fair enough. Um, but, you know, it's all personal preference, it's all a matter of opinion. But anyway, thank you so much as always for watching and I look forward to seeing my next video. Take care.